Well, it's worse than that. Let's think about square root of 2 for a minute. I can do the same thing here because in this interval, in this monad, we have square root of 2 plus 1 over k. Yeah? <laughs> Is that all right? No. <laughs> And so over so here, everybody, minus two. It gets its own little set of buddies infinitely close to it. So it's not just zero that's got all these things swarming around it. Every, every, num every number. Every number. Even K. Now, these numbers have what's called a standard part. If you look in any interval here, because the reals have this nice property, there will be a sort of a unique real number. But it's got all its buddies that are infinitely close to it as well. And these but there's an infinite number of these buddies. Oh yeah. As many as you started with. Or you could have more if you wanted, but already we have a lot. Wow. These monads are awesome. Why have I never heard of them? I don't know, but people have written a calcul uh, Kiesler wrote a calculus text using this infinitesimals. It was an idea of my thesis advisor, Abraham Robinson, to do analysis this way, to do the real study of the reals. It's very natural because you say things like as x is infinitely s close to a number, the function values are infinitely close to some other number. And that takes all the epsilon and delta out of the picture. But you have to be careful. You have to be careful because you can't talk about every single subset here. You get into trouble if you do. People are always talking about how there's an infinite number of things on the number line, and now you've just thrown a whole... Well, this is a different number line. This is what I guess we should call R star, right? The real numbers without the monads, okay? Now, it, it's different from the natural you numbers. You can't do away with the monads, though. Like they, they no, no, they, they come, they sneak back in. You see, we didn't have anything here that snuck back in. Four was definitely the fourth thing after zero in the, in the natural numbers, and it still is an N star. But when we allow ourselves the reals, things are going to pop back here because the reciprocals of infinite are infinitesimal. But on your first one, on the red one here, you, could, you couldn't create 1 over k or 1 over k plus no, 1? No, no. It's not there. It's not an integer. It's not a natural number. Okay. But it is a real number and it has, a, it has the right to be down here near zero. One of the things that's fun to do, either with n or the reals, is a sort of thought of ex experiment thinking, well, okay, are there infinite primes? Are there infinite integers that are the products of exactly two primes? Uh, are there infinite integers that are powers of two? The single prime two? And here, similarly, to think about uh, what it means to be close to something, what it means to be continuous, if you know the calculus terminology. All of those things you can think of in this context of a, of a very enhanced real number line or natural number line. So to get from zero to 0 0.0000001, I've got to go through all the numbers in the, in the monad. That's yes, they're all right there. And they're sitting around zero point zero 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 one also. So things have gotten very fuzzy. It's like you're looking at the reels with a magnifying glass and you see these little creatures. Suddenly little small fractions seem like nothing. <laughs> all these small fractions that people say, you know, oh there's all these tiny fractions between zero and one, they like they're huge. Uh -huh. But, I mean, wouldn't you ever wish if you just want to pick a small number rather than saying a half or a third or a fourth, we'll pick an infinitesimal. Well, I can see how the natural numbers are useful. You know, I've, I've got three sheep or, you know, I've got $20 worth of gas in my car. They, they have a utility. What's the utility of these infinite numbers out here? Because they obviously can't do, they're not very practical for the everyday man. How are they useful to you? Well, they're useful for intuition, and that's true of a number of non-standard things. I mean, we talked earlier about, uh, you and I talked about non-standard reels or so forth, but they're useful because you think, I really wish I had one infinite thing that was bigger than all of them, and it might allow me to think about all of the regular natural numbers in a different way. But really, the, this is, the natural numbers are the ones we care about. And they're very hard problems and very interesting questions about them that this approach would never touch, 
but it's just another system and sometimes in model theory having different versions, different models of the same basic structure give you different intuitions about them. And in particular, this idea that you can satisfy all these conditions at once, bigger than three, bigger than a hundred, bigger than a million, with a single element can be useful for your intuition about numbers. Up, twice, one, two, left, back, twice, one, two, right, U dash, that means the opposite direction, anti-clockwise, 